is going on, everybody? It feels like it's been forever for you. It's just been a week, but for me, it's been about a month or so since we've been in the studio, hasn't it, Jonathan? What, four or five weeks, I guess? Yeah, it's been about four or five weeks. Yeah, got away, spent some time with the family. Uh, we went out to Arizona. Kids and Devin went to to camp with, with Water's Edge Church, watersedgechurch.net. If you're looking for something awesome to check out online or if you're local in Hampton Roads, uh, several locations. Um, and then we got back from that trip. There's a little bit of chaos, you know, that went unplanned. But um, kids went out to California for a couple of weeks with my mom. And then Devin and I ended up in California, too, running around a little impromptu road trip for like two weeks. It was awesome. Wait, does Water's Edge still go to Tennessee for the church camp? No, they're down North Carolina. Oh, wait, did they go back to Gardner Webb? Because that's a move I would support. No, there's not a Gardner Webb. It's at it's like an actual, I think it's called like Crowder's Ridge or something like that. It's like a legitimate just camp. Uh, and then, you know, they bring all their production and all their stuff. They make use mm-hmm. of the facility, but it's a it's a legit like water's edge church camp now. Oh, so cool. okay. So I, I miss the old camp days where we would oh, just yeah, show up and it was like Gardner Webb University and it was a million churches from all over. No, this is all WEC. Nice. So they're rolling deep now. So it's cool. But yeah, so July was crazy. We were on the road. Um, it was really, really nuts, but we're excited to be back. Excited for business, you know, to be back working and, and back in here doing some things. So this actually wasn't a scheduled day. Um, I just texted him this morning, Jonathan's asleep. And I'm like, Hey, we're going to record at 10 30. You cool. He's like, I'll be there in 15. So typical closer. He shows up, has us ready to roll. Yeah, I have. Uh, so it's not on your text tone, but you have a special ringtone in my phone. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, it's the, it's the walking dead theme song. <laughs> so it comes on, it comes on real intent. So I know to answer the you phone. Got, all right. I was wondering, cause you all, I appreciate it. Yeah. My man, that's good. So look, so we're in here this morning. I said something I wanted to talk to you about, something I wanted to share. Um, it's kind of funny how it came about a, a little bit of it months and months and months ago. And then it got reiterated while I was on my trip with Devin and we were traveling. Um, so one of my companies um, is called uh, Sequoia Companies. And, um, you know, Sequoia, People, most people know Sequoia, common term. It's a big ass tree. All right. And um, we didn't name the company Sequoia because it's a big ass tree. Uh, Sequoia for my business partner and I uh, is a, a, a special word, a special place. Um, matter of fact, it's really, it's based off of a, a winery we really enjoy um, out in Napa, Sequoia Grove. And so we had a trip out there with our spouses and just had a great time. I was able to introduce them to the place and, you know, it just clicked off. And so, you know, a year later, you know, Katie and I are talking about some stuff. We're trying to come up with a name for, you know, our new business. And we are like, Sequoia Companies is cool and um, just, just great. And so, yeah, it's a really cool tree. Um, but the meaning for us, for the business, you know, came from just some special trips and events and, and things that, that we enjoy together. And so it was very fitting for us to name it. Well, you know, Katie's a research person. She wants to know as much as she can about something that she's involved in. So she's, even though it means nothing with regards to our business, she's researching like sequoia trees and, and learning more about it. And honestly, she's probably just trying to figure out how the hell to spell sequoia because it is a pain. I got to check it every time that I type it or write it. But you know, she had mentioned a couple of things to me that was unique about uh, sequoia trees and sequoia groves, um, you know, a long time ago. And I kind of brushed it off, didn't really think about it. Um, and so Devin and I end up in California a couple of weeks ago, and she's never been to some of the real big national parks out there. So, you know, we take her to Sequoia, we take her out to Yosemite and do all those things. And we're at Sequoia National Park like 8,000 feet up in the mountains. My wife's trying to kill my ass on these, not even hikes, they're just walks, but I'm getting crushed between elevation and, and just the walking, I guess. I, yeah, I gotta get better. Anyway, she's crushing me, but we're, we're seeing these beautiful views and these incredible trees, Jonathan. And it's just such a cool um, thing. It's beautiful. And I was there probably like 30, 35 years ago, right? Mama Mamu took me out there. I think my dad took me out there um, when I was real small one time, maybe. I, I, I'm not for sure. That might have been somewhere different. But anyway, you know, I'm stopping and I'm reading the little signs. You know, you go to like historical places or parks, you know, they'll have the little signs that are all beat up and raggedy on the side of the road. 
right? My, my grandmother and my mom, they were always big on reading that stuff and taking the time. So I'm taking the time and I'm reading these things. And, you know, one of the things I talked about was the root systems of these trees. Like these trees are thousands of years old. They are, the circumference of them is, is ginormous. Like General Sherman tree, which is like the largest tree on, on the planet. Um, it's hundred plus foot circumference around this tree. Like this joker, see, you could drive trucks through this thing if they put a cave in the middle of it. I think I've seen pictures of that. Yeah, he's, ma- this tree is massive. And the thing, I'm like, man, these roots got to go down to the damn earth's core to keep this tree standing up. Well, here's the thing that's crazy about these sequoia trees. Root systems are like three feet deep. Because where these sequoia trees grow and thrive, primarily certain elevations, certain climates, there in, in California, in the Sierra Pacific Mountains, those mountains are granite. They're just these huge slabs of granite. And so these roots aren't busting through this granite, right? And I'm like, how in the hell do these trees stay up like that? Like, cause they're so tall. Well, this is the trippy thing. So the root systems for these sequoia trees, they don't go deep, they go wide and they find each other and they grip up to each other and they hold on to each other. And so you have these trees that are massive, thousands of years old, spread throughout the forest that are finding their way to each other. And then in the mix of it all, other trees are getting knotted up in that system, but they're not choking the other ones out. They're just all like gripped up together and like holding on. And I'm like, this is dope. Like, this is sick. Like three feet into the ground, hundreds of feet up in the air. And these things are withstanding storms. These things are surviving wildfires that are out there in California, which is crazy. California's burning itself to the ground, you know, every other month, it seems like. Um, literally. Um, very literally. But, but the very literally. But these trees, they stay standing. And like the way their canopies are, right? The height of the canopy is at a certain height. So when these forest fires rage through, the branches aren't getting burnt up. It's just the, the base of the trees. But these trees are such beasts. They, every year, they, they, they like regenerate themselves. They add like a foot worth of layer all the way around of their, um, their exterior. So you see all these trees with these burn scars all over them. And then you see them healing around the scar. And the tree gets bigger and bigger and bigger, taller and taller and taller. But those roots are like three feet in the ground and they're sitting on top of rocks. So there's no real base, but they're gripping up with each other. And it got me thinking because like right now, <laughs> there is such hard shit going on with people I love. Like we've got normal hard shit going on, like in our family and just life in general, right? Life, life is always going to have normal hard stuff. Whatever. You deal with it. That's life. But then there's seasons where it's like really hard. It's really tough. It's, there's just so much heavy, heavy stuff. I cannot believe the last four, five, six weeks, two months, I feel like, the amount of heavy stuff, people I love, people I care about, people in my community that they're dealing with and going through. And I'm thinking about those that are thriving in the midst of the chaos and those that are, not. And the difference is has me thinking about that damn granite of those of that mountain. Like the people that are thriving, they're gripped up with so many people and they're spread out. So like when they're weak and they're having problems, the squad is holding them up and keeping them there. The ones who are are struggling and yeah, they're getting attacked by just life and it's, it's just hard things and they're 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 flailing. They're not gripped up with anybody. You know, they're just, they're just sitting there kind of solo or they got this weak little forest, you know, this little cluster of weeds, you know, around them. They're not gripped up. And I'm like, man, is, if that granite is not life itself, if that granite is not that barrier 
that, you know, you just keep beating your head against it, doing the same shit over and over and over again. Like thousands of years ago, these trees are trying to grow. And if these trees were just incessant, incessant on busting through this granite, we wouldn't have these incredible trees to see thousands of years later. But because the trees figured out, man, look, I can, I can spend this time trying to beat this same thing. Or I can find my homeboy down the way. Right? Yeah, so I guess the moral is up. don't keep pushing forward when sometimes no. you need to reach out. Right. Like, help. Like, life is so damn hard. And we're not, we are not designed to do it by ourselves. And when people force themselves to do it by themselves, there is no honor in failing and losing and struggling alone. There just isn't. When we're designed to be together and do things together and help each other. Yeah, we see and read about shitty, terrible things day in and day out. You can find any terrible thing you want to see. What nobody ever talks about, though, the majority of us out here, you, me, the majority of people you and I know, whether you've talked to somebody today or you haven't talked to somebody that you know for 15 years, you pick up that phone, you send a text, you shoot an email, you send a call. What's probably the response going to be? I got you. I'll see you in a little bit. Yeah, I can help out with that. No problem. Damn, even a stranger most likely will go out of their way to help you. That's the majority of us out there. But people are just, I feel like, are so hell-bent on hiding the difficult stuff. And like, well, I can only present perfection. I can only present everything's clean and pretty and tidy. And then on the inside, it's just freaking chaos because they won't reach out. And the strength comes in reaching out. And it's not always family. It's not always friends you know you got right now. It's new connections. It's, it's new relationships. It's, it's whatever. But I just, I thought about those stupid ass trees <laughs> and you know, Devin's killing me hiking up this mountain and I'm reading this little thing and I'm reading about these trees and all I'm thinking about are all these people I love that are going through all this crazy stuff. And I'm thinking about the ones that have great support and I'm thinking about the ones that don't. And the ones that don't, the majority of the time, it's self-inflicted. Because this is what happens too. You know, these trees, they hit this granite. They're reaching out. They're spreading out. They're trying to do what the ecosystem does and grip up so we can survive whatever together, right? There's always some son of a bitch coming through with an axe. Boom. Trying to cut, cut, the, cut the limbs, right? Cut the roots. Keep that connection from getting together. Freaking Karens. Like, bomb, boom. I'm cutting that, right? And that gets tiring. So now you're struggling and now here's another struggle. Here's another barrier, right? But if we could just like freaking grip up, we can get through all this shit. And that's all I was thinking about. I was like, man, how do I get, <laughs> how do we get people? It's like, do that. How do the people that I love that are struggling right now, who we reach out to and we try to help and it's just always shot down. It's always shot down. Like, cause that's something I'm struggling with right now. I'm like, do I stop asking? Do I stop checking on them? Do, am, am I making it worse by, hey, how you doing? Like, I know how the fuck you're doing. Like, you're not doing great. So I'm saying, how you doing? You know what I mean? Yeah, you're trying to prompt a conversation. And I think it's hard because now, like back in the day, I feel like a lot of that validation and a lot of that support system was really your close group of friends. But mm -hmm. now with social media and everything, people get that validation and that support. Yeah. By, or via likes yeah and it's right. like they'll post about their struggles only when they can post about it to receive support uh -huh. and they're trying to put on a vision of perfection at all other moments yeah so i mean every tree looks like it stands alone from the surface but underneath yeah. we're all pretty connected yeah that's dope that's that and that's super legit and people want to forget about that and the trees that are standing the tallest the trees that have been around the longest, like here's the lesson to play off what you just said. The trees that are standing the tallest, the trees that have survived the most are the trees that are linked up the most together. They've got the most support. They're not just deep individual roots going down into the ground holding on. 
they're super shallow and they're getting gripped up with so many people that they can. And there's power in that. Yeah. And that's why we have these beautiful, amazing, incredible trees to look at. And I started thinking about that part too. I'm like, man, all right. These really great people I know that I've had come in my life the last couple of years, super successful, super humble, great family people, tons of struggles, tons of issues, some ridiculously crazy, intense stories of failures, of loss, of tragedy, but they're still here. And they're standing taller than ever now. None of them got there alone, though. You know, it's it's help. And we're just such a society of not wanting to get help and prove a point. Like, I'm self-made. I'm, and no one is self-made. Why do you think that is, though, that the self-made culture has kind of been pushed to the forefront of, like, doing it by yourself? Because I feel like anybody who says that they did it by themselves is lying and not telling you who they had to support them. I think it's an overwhelming um, amount of immaturity. And that's not driven by age. It's not driven by age. I got a 50-year-old dude, 60-year-old dudes out here, immature as hell. Women, too. Just acting a fool. And they're doing stuff for the gram or the social, other social media, things like that. I mean, social media, if, if you're basing everything on social media and, and how your mood is going to be and vibe is going to be for the day, your feelings are going to get hurt because yeah. like I'll post something like for business. I'm like, this is sick. This is, people are going to love this. Like we're opening a new business. I think, you know, like my network, my friends are going to be, are going to hype it up and all this stuff. And I'll get like four congrats for a new business that we opened. Right. For opportunities we're creating higher and, you know, hiring people, you know, trying to better the community. Like four people might comment or share it, right? Maybe less. Hell, I don't know. But if I post a meme of a dog standing up pissing in a toilet, bro, it'll go viral. Yeah. It's shared a thousand times. Everybody's liking love. Oh my God, all this stuff. But you but it's something to like help someone who whatever, you know, with something actually real and a value, the support isn't there. You know, someone graduates college. Boom, congratulations. All this, people are all hyped for them, and, and they're, they're celebrating that. But maybe the dude who college wasn't for them, and they went off and got, you know, that HVAC technical certification, all this stuff, and they started their own company by 23, and they got two trucks, and they got a team they're building, and they're launching it, and they're looking for support, people to share their page and, and follow it. Crickets. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is social media really is like the surface where you see every individual tree standing alone. But when you look at real life, it is like that network underneath because usually the people who go about their lives like it's social media, like they're alone and they're quote unquote the main character, usually the worst types of people. Right. (laughs) Right. Usually the worst types of people like real life is completely separate from social media. Sure. And so, you know, I, I come back to we were talking about you know, July, I traveled a lot. I got to spend an amazing amount of time with my family. I got to spend a tremendous amount of time with my wife that that's not something that happens a whole lot. It's just her and I, and we got like two weeks together, man. And I'll tell you right now, like, I know my name's on all the crap and all those things. Our business had the second best month we've ever had, like as an organization. And why? Because I'm gripped up with a group of freaking killers. Like, they are beasts. You're, you're in the studio doing your thing, getting you know episodes out for the podcast. We worked hard leading up to that time that we knew I was going to take to get episodes recorded and all those things. The trainers doing amazing with the dog. We got more reviews in July than we've ever gotten. Yeah, people have been since killing we've been it. open. I mean, the trainers are just doing so well. The video quality that you know, just what the team is putting out is insane. Our support team, our admin team, our sales team, our marketing, Bay Rivers Boarding and Daycare. I, I'm i like, shit, I'll see y'all in January if this is how we're going to be if I'm gone. You know, and, and the thing that's so cool is that's that rooted system. That's what's there. The team. Yeah, because, I mean, if you were still trying to sell dogs or sell, make sales on dogs by yourself. Yeah. 
if you were trying to promote everything yourself, if you were doing lessons, it just gets stressful. Well, yeah, and to clarify, we don't sell dogs. Yeah, uh, we, we don't sell like dogs training like, packages. Yeah, yeah stuff. training packages. But for those who are still learning about us, I'm not out here you know, slinging dogs on the corner. Um, you know, training packages and stuff. But yeah, you're right. We would still be, honestly, if we were still trying to do that, I'd still be training out of the house. There wouldn't be a team. And there'd be like 60 people that wouldn't have jobs. That's crazy. I was having a conversation with somebody yesterday and I, I was running the math. I was like, holy cow, this little dog training thing now with Bay rivers and the other stuff that we do, it's hundreds of plates of meals a day in, in, in families just within our little organization. I was like, no wonder I lose sleep at night, but like, we have such a good system, a rooted system where we depend on each other and we work together. That's why I, I believe we're thriving. I know I'm not that smart. I know I'm not that talented. I know where I'm super weak and I get help. Like maybe, maybe that's the, the disconnect with people. Maybe that's, maybe that's the part is like, everybody wants to have this air of like, I got it all together and they won't get help where they need it. And so they can't ever improve. I wasn't always that way. You know, and maybe that's where it comes back to the maturity piece. And I still don't have a lot of shit to get. I need help in a lot of areas. Yeah. Everybody does. But I think we are doing how we're doing by the grace of God. <laughs> And the, the team that he's, you know, put me together with and give me an opportunity to sync up with and grab on and latch on to. I didn't have to, right? And that's where it comes up down to us to make decisions. And sometimes you grip up with people that's bad. Not every sequoia survives. Yeah, that is very that is very true. Not every sequoia survives. And you guys, you gotta let go of that one. You got like, mm, oh, you gotta go. Um, but Man, I I don't know. It's just it's just a crazy thing. It's just it just my, my heart is hurting right now for so many people, and at the same time, I'm equally more excited than ever for so many people. And I just saw all this correlation between these miracle of trees. Because if you haven't seen it, guys, like if you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't been there. You need to Google that junk. And then you need to, at some point in your life, go out middle of nowhere, California. You'll drive for an hour and a half up into the mountains. And all of a sudden these trees will start popping up and it's just awe inspiring. And if it's, if it's nothing to you, you got to get your shit together because it should be something to you. Um, so I, I don't know. I, it, we, we, we got to ask for help. We got to ask for help early. We need to look for help early and often. We need to um, not worry about how you think you're going to be perceived by showing vulnerability and weakness. Um, you, you just got to do it because whatever you're thinking in your mind is a million times worse than what the reality of it is going to be. Yeah, you know, I agree. I think growth comes through vulnerability. Every one of those sequoias was a sapling <laughs> yep. at, in the beginning, and they were a sapling that had to reach out and get connected to the network before they could yeah. grow. Yeah. yeah, and everything's and and I get being scared, and I get going through struggles. Like we all have them, but this shit is real. And like the last year, year and a half, you know, depression and mental health and just craziness of stuff it's just it's it's such a real thing and i just i just hate it i just hate it i hate it all and i think that so much of it can be prevented if before that tipping point is hit people just reach out and the thing is if you're connected before those things even start to happen with people good people the right people the odds of you running down a, a path are reduced doesn't mean you might not stray and get hemmed up over here for a little bit, but the odds of, of hitting these barriers are so much smaller than if you're just running by yourself. 
Yeah, and I also right? think it's important to note receiving that support. You're not always reaching out for support. Sometimes that vulnerability and growth can come through reaching out to help somebody else because yep. it it really is all a network. I know that we as a business do a lot to help others yeah. and reach out. We don't just always ask for help as well. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. So I don't know, guys. I I want to keep this one short. I just this stuff has been weighing on my heart and um and whatnot and i just I, I think it's important you know if if you need help get help ask if you're if you're struggling if you're depressed if you're battling health stuff you know and you're hiding all this stuff and you're keeping it within i don't know all the answers but what i do know 100 percent, the shit ain't gonna get better if you keep doing what you've been doing and so it, it can't possibly be worse <laughs> than what's to come if you start looking for help and looking for support and, and, and reaching out. And if you're doing great and you're thriving and you're just crushing life right now, be looking around because while you're running high and you stop paying attention to your surroundings, what you're missing is all the opportunities you have with your strength, your resources, your power, your words, uh, your wisdom, your generosity to help a lot of people that are around you that are in a bad season. Just because it's your good season doesn't mean everybody else is having a good season. Right? Shit. Look at the Bucks and the Patriots. <laughs> One move. One went from great to struggling. One went from struggling to the top. I don't know about you, but this is a Steelers house. I mean, it ain't my, this is my house. I'll tell you right now, it ain't a Steelers house. It ain't a Bucks or a Patriots house either, either though. But, you know, it's like, just, just, just do that. Don't just be so high and focused on yourself because you're having a good season. You're winning that you're missing the people around you that you should be reaching out to and connecting with and taking care of. All right. We all have an obligation to each other. Let's start acting like it. Thanks, John.